This is The Sound of Small Business, brought to you by RBC Royal Bank. I'm J.P. Davidson, and these are the inspiring stories and hard-earned lessons of successful Canadian entrepreneurs. The RBC Small Business Live panel series features business owners and experts sharing their experiences and providing advice to entrepreneurs across Canada. In this episode, we'll focus on moving from affordable marketing to effective selling. We'll look at traditional marketing methods that work in a social media world, how business owners can convert online traffic into leads and sales, and why it's sometimes best to focus on retaining existing customers. Today's panelists are Barry English, president of TDG Marketing, Claudia Harvey, CEO of On The Verge and co-founder of Digit Apparel, and Jeffrey Wood, president of the agency next door. Now here's panel moderator and vice president of small business at RBC, Jason Storsley. You hear less about you know, shoe leather marketing and grassroots marketing, but does it still play a role? And how do you use it in your businesses? When I launched my business, the Chamber of Commerce for me was a huge source of introducing my business to the community, networking with mm-hmm. people, providing Perfect. some credibility. It yeah. gave me some credibility. It gave me an opportunity to talk to like-minded people. It was such an important part of our business. And then we looked and we said, boy, it's working so well. And it's like anything else. You only get what you put into it, right? So if you're a member, but you're not going out to a meeting or joining a committee or volunteering, helping out a little bit somewhere, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. if you're doing those sorts of things, then your business starts to gain a profile. It starts to gain a personality, I right? So I think chambers of commerce, networking Rotary. groups, Rotary clubs, mm-hmm. all of those sorts of things where you're actually involved in the community, I think are an important part of where it's an opportunity to share your business story. So. The world may be going digital in a lot of ways, but don't forget about these traditional types of marketing tactics. They're still very effective. Talk to me a little bit about print. It used to be that print was big, newspapers, magazines, pamphlets. Where are we with print today? And do any of you use it? Constantly. Hmm. I send appreciation and thank you notes to my clients all the time, all the time. After I meet them for the first time, I send them a note. After I close them as an account, I say I'm looking forward to meeting and working with you and having you grow. And there are tools that I use effectively to do that, that I've automated, that is not reinventing the wheel all the time. Right. So I think that personal touch goes tremendously a long way for uh, building your business and retaining your business. Because it takes 80% of the time to actually obtain a business and 20% of the time to retain it. Right. So effectively use your time to retain your clients. Mm. And how do you do that? You do that often with print. You do that with emails, absolutely. But the open rate for emails is about 3%. So know that and understand Mm. that, that don't spend three hours over an email (laughs) because it's not as effective sometimes as print. Right. No matter what you do, you got to figure out how you're going to stand out and you're doing it. Mm -hmm. And I would suggest it's actually a whole lot harder to stand out using social media because other medias give you more latitude to work with. So, for instance, we had a a small business client a couple of months ago and we did a direct mail campaign. Like that was the most powerful message we ever had delivered. Mm -hmm. It was phenomenal. And it's just how you approach it. It actually went from the printed form, nothing to do with us but it suddenly was picked up social media wise. Mm -hmm. People were taking a picture of it and sharing it. Like, Mm. wow. That's a successful campaign. Yeah. 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 So print is effective. You've used print successfully. Don't forget about that in the social age. What are some other forms of networking? Barry said something really key, which was understand your community and figure out a way to get that community to support you. Because if you can do that, you are golden. And when I was coming onto this panel, I talked to a small business friend of mine. I said, Look at your six years running a store. What's been the most powerful thing that you did Mm -hmm. that can help explain the success you have today? Mm -hmm. He says, 100%. It's all the charities that I got involved in. Donating my product, donating my time. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow. The community responds to that. Now they know I'm that good guy that helps out. So they bring their business Mm -hmm. to them. And that's right. another touch point in the yeah. community. You get your logo out there, you get your brand out there, and it's a feel good. 
Yeah. You know, it's a wonderful thing that you're doing this and you're donating your time and your product and your service. So it's a feel good. People remember that. Mm. And they think that's wonderful. It's another touch point. Yeah. You talked about the human side earlier, Claudia, and I think it's so easy to forget that in these days of social, but how meaningful a handwritten card, mm-hmm. a personal thank you, mm-hmm. and it can play very much into your business strategy because you talked about, you know, 80% of the effort to get a new client, mm-hmm. 20% to retain it. Mm-hmm. And so that how you close that sale or that relationship that you have becomes so critical. Talk to me a little bit about business and client retention. Mm-hmm. We talk about new clients and building new clients and driving new traffic to websites. Mm-hmm. What are the tactics in retaining clients and some of the strategies it's you've used? creating that personal touch. Mm. It's having amazing customer service. When you have a new product that's in your lineup, you're able to go back to your existing client base and able to upsell that because they've already trusted you and they like your products that you've already had. And it's about, again, communicating effectively what you can do for them in addition to what you've already done. Right. So it's that personal touch. It's all Mm. customer service. So there's strategy of sales, new sales, but there's whole strategy in customer service and how to keep that customer close to you. Yeah. And uh, I think that's extremely important and it's a lot easier than acquiring new sales. Yeah. You know, and I think it even starts even before that. It's even before the customer service. You know, if you're going to start a hairdressing salon, then cut really good hair, cut hair. Mm. Fantastic. Be the best hair cutter that you can be. If you're going to sell widgets, make sure your widgets work really well. Mm -hmm. And I think at the end of the day, it's quality. Yeah. Yeah. Right. In today's world, quality still matters. So if you've started your business and it's not going as well as you want it to go, really step back and look at, you know, is my product or my service up to the level it needs to be right. to be able to compete in today's world? Before right. we went to the market and dig it, we took nine months to actually create the prototypes to understand if the prototypes are going to work. Because if they weren't working on my business partner and myself, which was our niche market, we were the niche market, then we weren't going to be able to sell it mm. at the price point that we wanted to sell it at. Yeah. So you're right. It's mm-hmm. very important to have the product and the service that you want to portray out in the marketplace. Yeah. As human beings, we, we prefer the familiar. Mm-hmm. And if you've done a good job for someone, why on earth would they go anywhere else? Right. And that's very much what I'm hearing from both of you as well, Barry and Claudia, around know what you do, do it better than anybody else, Mm -hmm. and make sure your clients are absolutely loving it. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about word of mouth for a second, because it Mm -hmm. plays it very much into that. And we were talking earlier about, you know, word of mouth and how do you branch out beyond word of mouth in terms of marketing tactics? Well, say that you have a widget and you become an expert in the widgets. Mm -hmm. There has to be trade magazines or there has to be publications out there that you can actually submit articles to and you become the expert in your field. Mm -hmm. So you become the voice of the widgets. Absolutely. Especially in today's world where it's online magazines and and journalism has opened everybody today. Right. Right. And that's how you go from grassroots to much bigger. That's Mm -hmm. how you grow globally. Mm -hmm. And then you can start social media playing that. So Mm -hmm. you've got your touch point in a magazine as an expert. Yeah. And then you can play off of that into a social media campaign. So there's different ways of strategizing on how to market that, but it costs nothing to submit an article to an editor in a trade publication or a magazine and see if it gets picked up. Or a blog. Or a blog. I love what you just said there. You talked about, you know, marketing on a dime and more effective ways to get people to your website. If you can get a partnership with some media out there, who can authenticate what you say or what you do, you're going to drive way more than as a professional I could ever help you do better. Right. So find those media people in your community and talk to them. Yeah. So let's pick up on that for a second because we're talking to people, we're printing ads, we have an effective website that we've got our messaging is clear and the value proposition is clear. Let's talk for a minute about converting some of that online traffic that you're driving to your website to leads. Any ideas and thoughts or experiences you've got around how do you turn some of these connections into sales? First of all, I think measurability will be important for any small business owner. And what we would typically say is, if you're going to do a campaign to drive people to your website, let's create what's called a landing page Mm -hmm. that allows us to track hits to your website from the campaign. It's not complicated to do, and we need to be able to track how well we're doing. And if we could do better, maybe we can tweak it. So that's number one find a way to measure. 
Landing pages are very, very important because it's the call to action. It's the conversion mm -hmm. that's important. One thing that's important to know is the difference between clicks onto your landing page and conversion. So conversion is the actual revenue, is buying the right. product, buying the service. So it's nice to get eyeballs onto mm -hmm. the website and onto the Facebook ad and et cetera. And it's very important to strategically understand how to get the proper customer base looking at the ad. But it's from the ad, then getting to the landing page, then doing the conversion. Right. And all of those metrics are really important. Right. I've always believed a sale is a collision of time and need. And the role of marketing is to build the brand's awareness and understanding so that when that collision happens, they go, ah. Oh, they're set up for it. Dig it. I, that's, that's who I need. Right. That's what I need at that point, whatever it may be. But at the end of the day, your website has to ask for the sale. Whether you're asking for the sale or you're asking for an action, you have mm -hmm. to ask. A lot of entrepreneurs and business people don't understand that just having a conversation and then walking away is a lost opportunity. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you don't have to be a pushy salesperson no. to have them buy your product or service. You just have to project confidence in your product and service and they're buying from you. They're right. trusting you. Yeah. And that's what I train a lot of entrepreneurs on is how to overcome the fear of actually selling themselves and then selling the product and service right. that they're representing. Right, a good yeah. point. And then good following point. up <laughs> After a meeting, of course, after yeah. an opportunity is absolutely critical. Mm. So you do that in a phone call, an email. So a let's card. talk about that follow up. Mm -hmm. And I was going to ask you: Do you do it in a, in a phone call? Do you collect email address and a dis build distribution list? Like, what's an effective way to follow up and above. track all these communications? All of the above, Claudia, is what you're saying. And how can we help you? A sale to help my bottom line isn't the answer. It's what difference can I make in their business? How can I build their website so that it can help them do better business? Right. How can we produce video that's going to help them stand out against the crowd? How can we do market research that's going to give them a little bit of information to do better business? Right. You know, all of those yeah. sorts of things. And but I think that's nice to keep in mind because as we think about how we're marketing our clients, it is about what we're doing for them. What's Absolutely. our value proposition? But why is it that they should actually want mm -hmm. what we have to offer? And I think mm -hmm. that's, that's so important. We've covered a lot of ground today from online websites to traditional marketing to social media. I think it's been fantastic and we really appreciate the three of you sharing your experiences with us. To wrap up our conversation, I'd like to ask each panelist to share their final tips and advice on how business owners can make the most of their, at times, very limited marketing budgets to promote their companies and products and make their someday happen. As a small business person, you have limited resources. So it's really important that you spend all 10 pennies of your dime <laughs> wisely. <laughs> right. But by all means, you got to spend them as well. And if that requires talking to someone who actually does this for a living, I suggest doing that. If you're going to hire someone to do your pipes, to do your electricity, hire someone to do your advertising. So it's not just about the cost. It's about what return are you actually Correct. getting for it and where you're going to spend your time and your money. Claudia, any closing thoughts and tips for our audience? I think the very first thing is you start with your mindset and you understand where you want to spend your time, your mm. effort, your money, and understand that you have the confidence that you can go out and sell yourself and right. you network, right. network, 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 yeah. network, network. Yeah. And yeah. you never know where that one communication with that one person who you didn't know is going to leapfrog into something else, into something else, into something else. Yeah. And that is absolutely key. And I think that's great advice. Whatever you are doing, wherever you're at, you're always marketing. Barry, closing thoughts and tips for our audience? Absolutely. Start with a marketing plan. Write a plan. Whether you bring someone in to do that plan for you or do it yourself, remembering that your time is also money. Right? But write a marketing plan and then deliver that marketing plan. Right. Execute it. That marketing plan needs to say to you, here is the message and how I'm going to communicate with this group of people, this group of people, this group of people, yeah. this group of people. Plan it and execute it. Have passion while you're doing it and do good business. This has been the Sound of Small Business, brought to you by RBC Royal Bank. For more advice and stories of small business success, subscribe to the podcast in iTunes or search for the Sound of Small Business wherever you find podcasts. You can also visit rbc.com slash building business for advice and tips on how to start, manage, or grow your business. Thanks for listening. This podcast series is intended as general information only and is not to be relied upon as constituting legal or other professional advice.
No endorsement of any third parties or their advice, opinions, information, products, or services is expressly given or implied by Royal Bank of Canada or any of its subsidiaries. Its subsidiary.